people better to strategically spend their businesses. And um, <clears throat> I came in and was feeling really, really bad about uh, kind of going on with my life while people's lives were literally being wiped off the map. And, um, and I came in uh, Friday feeling bad about it, met with a client, went into the blogging lounge, and ran into Deb in from uh, Blog World Expo and said, we've got to do something about this. You know, maybe we could just start rallying some disaster relief through uh, the Red Cross, because I've been training a disaster relief for Katrina with um, the U.S. Red Cross and the American Red Cross. And uh, she said, yeah, let's go for it, let's do it. So we started getting some buzz going, you know, text to 90999 at the Red Cross. And, uh, and then I got an email from Jessica Lynn, who told me, hey, do you know about Rob Wu and uh, what he's doing at South by Southwest number four in Japan? And I said, no, but tell me to get up here in the Blogger Lounge. We were in the Samsung Blogger Lounge. And that's where all of it started. That's where all the collaboration happened. And Rob came up. Where are we going to? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, so what I do is uh, I'm a founder at Cosbox. And we, what we do is we help nonprofits launch online fundraising campaigns. So uh, the, the, the campaign is being powered by our platform, which is really cool. And what happened was you know, that morning, the first day of South South was I woke up. And then my girlfriend Jess was kind of browsing through the news and was like, whoa, you know, what is that? And you see the media, you see kind of the video, the photos, and just the vivid and jaw dropping like imagery of what's happening in Japan. So what we did is we just set up a platform so that, and, um, so that you know, the South by Southwest community can get involved and the disaster support. And when you say you set up a platform, the platform allows people to donate through text messages, donate through what? Give, give us the sort of run of what? You're making money. Sure. So for us, um, people can donate online through credit card, uh, either through the mobile phone at, or the iPad or on the computers. And then Red Cross has a code nine zero nine 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 that people can text in to donate ten dollars. Okay. Well, you know, we, we wanted to text nine zero nine 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 to the Red Cross. They that's there. We're not measuring the donations directly in by text to the Red Cross. Red Cross has one number. They want to promote through one number. There's no way to track that. But we wanted to have a way, if we could find people here to match donations from South by Southwest, we wanted to try to, you know, to get the community rallied around a cause and really push, you know, donations from this community because, I mean, it's the best and brightest minds in the world meet here. And if we're not going to use influence, you know, in a way that's truly influential, then what are we here for? And, you know, that's what Deb and I were talking about. Deb, you know, was just... I'm tell them what you did. It was such a collaborative effort. It was great. Well, first and foremost, compared to what Rob and Lee did, my little bit was kind of minimal. But um, <laughs> we were in a locker lounge, and we were eating free chicken, and we were drinking wine, and we were listening to this lovely band, and it felt like Nero, fiddling while Rome was burning. And so Lee and I were talking about how bad we felt, and we needed to do something. And I said, you know, this room, Calls all these social media gurus and experts and influencers. And if we can't do anything, then everything we tell people we can do online is all just talk. And so it was time for all the people who say that they're big deals online and that they have new influence and reach to put up a shut up. And so I went from table to table and I said, here, this is South by Southwest Cares. This is a hashtag. Tell people to give, tell people to retweet, and it just helps get the ball rolling. And um, I know we immediately got a $1,000 donation. Yeah, well, we, Rob, Rob came in, we had at least 700 um, already. You know, he woke up in the morning and built South by Southwest for Japan. Dot org, and we had started uh, South by Southwest Cares, and we're looking at domain names. So he came in, he procured those domain names, we pooled our resources, we, we jointly united those hashtags. Rob was recoding the site. Hugh, you guys know Hugh McLeod from uh, Gaping Void. I went over to him on the couch and I said, hey, can you put down your beer for a second and draw us a logo? He's like, yeah. So he, he drew up a logo for us. We stuck it up on the site. Um, I wrote a copy. Deb was circulating and schmoozing with all her blog world contacts saying, hey, can you tweet this hashtag out? And then we had some wonderful people from Weber Shandwick who were there, um, not only representing Samsung, but their own, you know, their own company, um, jumping in to pay for the cards that we had printed out, jumping in to offer to help us out with anything that we needed. And it was really, I mean, a truly collaborative effort. We've also had some people from other companies, you know, jumping up and volunteering to help. Um, Eric Noble couldn't make it here, um, but he, oh, sorry, Chris Noble. <laughs> 
And there's been a lot of people we've been talking to. <laughs> uh, well, what, what are the, you mentioned the hashtag a couple of times. What are the hashtags? Hashtags SXSW cares and hashtag SXSW number four Japan are the two hashtags that are probably the most active. But we're seeing stuff, you know, the, we reached out to um, Jessica, who should probably be up here with us, that has reached out to you know, a whole host of people on the speakers' panels. Um, Brian Solis was in the lounge with us. He put a slide in his presentation. Linda Aikawasaki promoted it. Um, obviously, Hugh uh, Morris got involved in and promoted us, and um, all the blog posts and things started to roll from there. So it was a, you know, what's great about this, it is a truly organic, um, real-time, crowdsourced, collaborative process. And what's so cool about that is that's what we're here at, and, and you know, real-time iterative technical <coughs> development, <laughs> right, Ron? Um, you know, and that's what we're here to do, and, and we feel like it's a good case study for what's possible in the future, and also kind of links together uh, news and journalists to the people in a way that, you know, inspires rapid action. And, and the earthquake in Haiti was one of the first instances like this where people gather around technology and maybe use the technological platforms to do this, right? Well, you know, when I, you know, when I was really moved, the, the first thing that hit me really on Twitter was the Mumbai attacks. Okay. I, I was riveted to my desktop, you know, talking to friends in Mumbai who were watching and things out their window, and, and it absolutely rocked my world. And I don't think that I ever saw journalism the same way, and because I was hearing things before they were hitting the public airwaves. So it's well, in fact, in, in, in fact, today, the journalism that we're getting about Japan you know, yes, the New York Times is doing pioneering work on all the media visualization and everything else, but you're still using social media. It is, it's testament to the power. It's, 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 it's as much of a news wire as anything, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. And, um, yeah, the chain of conversation on what I was going to say, but I, I, I generally think that, okay, so I woke up thinking about, I was at 3 a.m., and I, how I found out about the attacks was somebody told me, hey, uh, Tomo, who's one of my colleagues, is in Tokyo visiting his family. And the email was, oh my god, Tomo, in all caps, are you okay? And I was like, oh man. And unfortunately, he was at a Starbucks in, in Tokyo, and he immediately put a status out on his Facebook and let us know where he was. Now, interesting enough, Tomo has been, he's a graphic designer and a phenomenal designer, and he, um, he was out there shooting pictures. And now his pictures are up on the citizen, uh, the citizen contributed photos on the New York Times that time. So it's kind of neat sort of synchronicity, really. And then we're talking, uh, Lee's talking about Mumbai, but in fact, probably. No, no, this was for. No, no, but you said that Mumbai was the first time that you were aware of thinking about a disaster situation using technology or social media as yeah. a source. Yeah. But yeah. from a fundraising standpoint, Bob, yeah. Haiti was really the first one that most of us were aware of, right? Haiti was the one that was widespread. Yes. Yes. Not only did it text you any, really, you can't speak. And very hard to that. But also, there was a lot of other means of social media as well as the job, which is Twitter, and the Facebook channel. So, with some of us, what we want to do is to really harness that channel and kind of blast it out there so more people can see it. Is it appreciably different today versus the Haiti situation, either in terms of fundraising or news gathering and dissemination? Having been advanced to technologically, a platform that didn't exist then and exists now, that have made a difference to us. Right. Technology evolves so fast that there's always new and better platforms out there. So, I think the one thing that's really different today compared to Haiti is the, the media that is covered. In Japan, you can actually see a lot of data, you can see photos. So a lot more, you can communicate a lot more different with channels where you just have an email and you know, personal accounts with it, such as the video. And as Bill Keller said, you know, even the New York Times, which is not particularly interested in people who don't have you know, high journalistic ethics and standards, they're obviously incorporating crowdsourced material into their coverage of this alongside the coverage of their reporters. And the two sides of it, you want to go on a cross source report. So it's cool to see some of that happen every single day. Uh, uh, you said, Lee, that, that you were hoping initially, or I said you were hoping initially to raise $10,000 to the center, but you quickly got past that, and as of just before this panel, you were 18, is that right? 17,643. And I'm looking at it on the website, you can see, you can keep track of it. Yeah, offers that we're going to be monitoring the hashtag, we're going to be making some announcements.
announcements, but we're not prepared to make those yet. We hope to line up some stuff before this meeting, but... It was a little last minute. So, well, it's all real time, baby. This is uh, about, right? So, uh, so please we keep in touch with us. And if you need to get in touch with any of us, you know, our contact information is on the website, so feel free to reach out. Um, well, we had planned this really to be a very little bit of talk up here and more of a conversation with all of you out there about the ways in which technology has transformed both the coverage of a situation like this and then the relief efforts that individuals or institutions can contribute to. So let me open it up to anybody here who wants to ask a question to Lee or Deb or Rob about what they're doing either in this case or generally what they do in a situation like this. And we have a microphone here, but you're welcome, given the intimacy of the room, to stand up and Mr. Connor. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Ha happy birthday, by the way. Thank you very much. <laughs> Facebook told me. So. <laughs> um, my question, first of all, I think it's, it's great what y'all are doing. When I first found out about the uh, South by Southwest for Japan.org website, I, I went right to it. And I, um, my honest reaction was, you're only asking at that point for $20,000, and you were going to stop it in two days. Um, and I was wondering if you thought now, to just don't put a cap on it, either on number of days, or if you wanted to end it maybe at the end of South by Southwest. But what was your thinking on saying we're going to stop it on uh, Tuesday? Well, I can talk about the business logic, and we can talk about the, um, the tool logic. I think there's two things at play there. You know, we, I, had, I had a feeling going into this at $20,000 would be easy easy for South by Southwest, especially if we, you know, pay four fifty dollars a pop for our tickets, right? So, and get in early. Um, I think that we've got an audience with incredible influence and incredible resources to bring to play, and we haven't even scratched the, the, the surface of um, the different dot-com startups and major corporations that contribute to the success of South by Southwest each year. So, um, and, and we've had Natalie over here, Barbara Shatner, talking to some of those folks for us, and I have not even had a chance to get an update from her on what she's discovered with them. So when you look at the site, what it does is it sets a goal amount, which is an adjustable goal amount, and originally the goal was, was we said we had no goal, but we were hoping for 10. And as soon as we got near 10, we said 20. And now, I mean, the sky's the limit. We're not going to put a cap on it. There's no cap on it. And it was set, you know, to procure funds through South by Southwest, right? Through the duration of South by Southwest. Um, Rob, can you talk about why you put those things in place? Yeah, so with a lot of money, there's a lot of game camps. So people like to see something, a goal that's attainable and that's reachable. So what I really want to do is set something small and reach that really fast, and then from there, adjust and adjust and adjust. Kind of taking a different approach to kind of so the plan is that once you hit this next goal, the goal, then move, move the goalpost basically a third time. Yes. 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 And can I can I weigh on that? So my job was, or we we gave me a job, right? My goal was to go talk to vendors and companies, and so I um, it's kind of game mechanics, right? And so there's a call to action and a deadline, and so based on the talk that I saw yesterday from the guy from Scavenger, I used some of his principles, which were to give people a call to action and a deadline. And so I said by 3:30 um, Pacific Coast time, you must donate. You must, like capital letters. And everybody's like, oh, okay, we'll go and we'll talk to Corporate Common. Um, how much do we need? And our logo goes up. And like, I just watched people scramble fast. And so, you know, and then some people say, well, we can't get it by 3 30. How about 4? And I'm like, okay. And so, you know, like $4,000 got donated because we did that. And then some people said, well, we can't do it till tomorrow. Is that okay? And I'm like, yeah, it's okay. So it was really fascinating to me to, me to see, and there's going to be more, I'm, I'm sure. Well, so. I think it's important to say that we're not the only ones that are doing this here. There's been some other folks that have been um, using the hashtag to, to push, you know, to push the, we have a formal relationship with the Red Cross. We, we, we nailed down in, in four hours. We got a site. We got a relationship with the Red Cross. And, and the, money the, the money is being donated through this effort right, to, to the Red Cross. And so there's no question about whether the money will then go to a product or be used properly. Red Cross will use it and be great. Yeah. Well, that's the and brilliance of what she did was to, to directly link the South by Southwest site to the Red Cross. So when you go to southbysouthwestcares.org, it she these guys directly related that to the Red Cross. So there's you know. We it's, established a partner agreement, but the, uh, the thing that you know happens with this real time crowdsourcing, everybody wants to help. And so there are other groups on there saying, hey, donate here, donate here. And we're not going to get in there and tell people not to do that. And we, we would like.
like it to go through, you know, our site because we want to try to get some matching. But you know, we're not going to discourage anybody from trying to generate support, you know, through South by Southwest Care. So we, we or South by Southwest for Japan. So again, you know, we talk about open source code. This is open source giving, right? Open source business, which is what we're all attempting to drive in the future. I think open source journalism. <laughs> Mr. Connor, are you satisfied with that? Yeah, I just would suggest to just keep it open and keep going because what you started is great. And uh, as music kicks in on Tuesday, I'm yeah. still very hopeful that uh, there will be a Japan night on Friday night. It's always one of the most fun showcases. I'm not sure if all those bands are going to be able to be here. You know, Kohono is scheduled to be here on Thursday. And I just think as, as we continue to learn more and see more of what's going on over there, there's going to be more people saying they want to help. So Actually, thank you for the Japan people um, on my way.